Good morning. I'm Bill Chamberlain, and you're probably wondering why I'm standing out in front of this old dilapidated radio station. Well, I have been asked to pay tribute to my very best friend, my brother, Don Sinclair, who bit the big one. I know, I know, bit the big one's a little insensitive, but trust me, if you knew Don, he's laughing his ass off. Let's go inside. Actually, Don worked here at one time, so let's go inside and see if we can find his ghost. Don worked here many long years ago when it was KSTN. Now it's 105.9 The Bull. And he's probably haunting this place for the many things that it do, did with him. Don and I met back in 1978 in Oxnard at KACY. Don was the morning man and I was the production director. And the program director, Bill Tanner, brought him into the production room and said, Hey, I got a problem. I need some promos for KC Radio Bingo. And he walked out and didn't give us any clues to what we were supposed to do. He just said, I need some promos. Well, Don and I looked at each other and we said, yeah, that's the stupidest idea I have ever heard. But we needed to come up with something. So we thought it over, we thought it over. And, and finally, suddenly, a man on the street routine popped in our heads. And, and we thought it over. We, we tried out some voices and we tried out some lines. Finally, 10 minutes later, we had finished recording and we came up with this. This is your roving reporter once again speaking with Herman Fenster. Hello. Herman, you may recall, has had his body tattooed with 32 Casey Bingo cards. And there's eight new ones every Friday at the Corbs in San Barbara and Ventura counties, right? That's true. Herman, a number of people have been wondering, how do you mark your bingo cards? Well, first we use beans, but uh, my wife was allergic to beans, mm -hmm. and when she'd sneeze, she'd blow the whole game. That can be troublesome. Say, Herman, I trust you found a solution. Yeah, we did. First we used lipstick. Lipstick. Yes, it was. It was a lot of fun marking them numbers, but it, I had to take a real quick bath in between every game. And now? We use chocolate. Chocolate? Yeah, it makes for a real good game, but it's a whole bunch of fun when it's all over. We do it for you on KC 152. It was right then and there that we knew we had something. We weren't sure what it was, but we knew we had it. And so I put my hand on his shoulder, and I looked him in the eye, and I said, Don, what do you want to do for the rest of your life? He said, Bill? I'm married. And I say, yeah, yeah, whatever. I'm talking about professionally, not romantically, thank God. Anyway, what do you want to do? He says, I don't know. I said, well, I want my very own radio and TV commercial production company. And that was the start of Stage 3 Productions. A few months later, the Ventura County Ad Club had its awards banquet, and I had entered things from Corbett's Trading Post that I had produced, and he had entered things from Casey that he produced. And <clears throat> we went through the entire... When, went through the entire evening, and we didn't win anything. We were a little disappointed at that, but we thought, oh, what the hell, I had a good meal. So at the very last thing, throughout the entire evening, it was runner-up, winner, runner-up, winner, and they'd play, if it was audio or TV, they'd play one spot of the winner, and that was it. They came to the very last category, which was 60-second humorous self-promotion. But to be honest with you, I had totally forgotten that we had entered the KC Radio Bingo promotions. So I wasn't expecting anything. He says, and the MC said, we've changed things up a little bit here. What we're going to do is we're going to play the winner for you. And they did. They played the winner in one commercial. No one laughed. And they say, we are playing this, this way because we find these commercials highly creative and ingenious. And I may be throwing the genius part around a little bit too much. But, but still, still, this is what happened. They played all 12 of the Casey Radio Bingo commercials. And people were laughing, rolling in the aisles. And once again, Don and I looked at each other and said, you know, we got something here, don't we? Well, the very next Monday, we started getting phone calls from every advertising agency in Ventura and Santa Barbara County, and we were off and running. Over the next several years, we won 25 highly creative, humorous radio advertising awards for the Ventura County Ad Club. And, and in the last show, I think it was, we had entered the pool people. Now, the pool people were little gnome type guys who would come into your backyard in the middle of the night and dig you a pool in 14 days or two weeks, whichever came first. And these commercials were, they were cute and they're funny. And, and we won, we won the, the, uh, the 60 second humorous campaign award. And uh, when, I, when, when I got up to get the award, I turned to the audience and said, you know, I just wanna thank the little people for this award. Everybody laughed.
Even me. Dick, come on, get the water. The water? Right, it's time to fill the pool. Oh. It's day. We In just 14 days, the pool people can install your designer series swimming pool filled with soothing water. Water. Modern space age acrylics make it possible to install a quality pool at a fraction of the cost of old pools. And yet a designer pool will not rust, rot, or corrode. It's not affected by the elements. See them tumble along. The Pool People, 23rd and M, Bakersfield. A short time later, I called my friend in Bakersfield, Bob Leinhardt, and said, Hey, we just put together a production company. I want to send you some of our stuff, see if you can get us some advertising work up there. And he says, Yeah, whatever, as long as it's not that Bill and Leslie crap. Well, Bill and Leslie was a campaign I did for Corb's Trading Post that I was quite proud of. Bob, not so much. I sent him our tape, and this was the very first thing he heard. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea, this is your man on the beach speaking with Claude Hopstetter. That's right. Mr. Hopstetter. You can just call me Claude. I imagine so. Claude, we're here to ask your opinion of John's at the beach. Well, to tell you the truth, I don't think there's enough of them. What? I said there's not enough of them. There's one down by the lifeguard tower, a really nice one. And there's one about a mile up the beach. You but don't seem to understand. That very well could be. Claude, please. Sure. Claude, John's at the beach is a restaurant. You mean to tell me they eat in there? That's right. John's at the beach has some of the best food on the waterfront. That thought is really disgusting. That's right. We're disgusting. John's at the beach. I have visions of people sitting at little porcelain tables, you know, and little tiny napkins folded up and long chains hanging over their head. No, no. John's at the beach is not a chain store. There's only one John's at the beach. Oh, no, no. You forgot the one about uh, by the lifeguard tower. Well, Bob called us up immediately and said, come on up. I got work for you. And I said, cool. Well, we went to Bakersfield. We won a few more awards up there and had some fun, made some money. And we started working really hard and doing a, a lot of stuff. And one day Don turned to me after we had produced a commercial and we're laughing our little patooties off. He said, wow, another GWG production. And I went, what? We're, we're stage three productions, not GWG. He's going, no, no, it's something I came up with, GWG productions. You know, we set standards for what we do. We have to live within those standards no matter what we send out to people. If I can't say it's a GWG production at the very end, then we start over again, don't we? And I said, well, yeah, that's true, we do. And I said, well, what does GWG stand for? And he looked at me and with all the sincerity in the world, he goes, God, we're good. After I got up off the floor, I said, yeah, we are. Well, honestly, we weren't trying to blow our own ego or get crazy about this, but we did. We set standards. We had to live up to those standards. And if we didn't, we seriously tossed everything, started over again. Because if it didn't make us laugh, it wasn't going to make anybody else laugh. And we wanted to entertain our audience as well as sell the products. And that's what Stage 3 did. Entertained the audience, sold the product. Here we are once more with Mr. Zoo, caretaker of some Taker. of the most unique... I don't care for that word unique. How about bizarre? Oh, hey, I like bizarre. Bizarre That's creatures around, one. created for the combination dinner plates at the gin mill, like this loblone. You did what? What? Ah, yes, oh, the loblone. Yes. Half top sirloin and half lobster. How did they manage Don't oh, ask. Okay, and over here, the rare scamp loin. Part shrimp scampi and part top sirloin. You see how I manage this? I don't this. want to know about that. I'll get sick. The gin mill, Victoria, just north of the freeway, Ventura. <laughs> We're high atop a signpost in front of our Chase Dodge, formerly Dan Vreeland Dodge, to speak with... I am the human sign. And what are you doing atop this Art Chase signpost? Actually, while the signs are being switched mm -hmm. by a Dodge, Art is allowing me to demonstrate my new advertising idea. Which is? Vocalization. I see. You see, I sit up here and as people drive by, Art Chase is new! Mm -hmm. I tell them about the all-new Art Chase Dodge. So you scream... Oh, never, never say scream. Oh, it's called okay. abundant vocalization. Get a van! Ah. I personally see the day when all signs will be replaced by dedicated men like myself. Don't you ever get cold up here? The uh, weather is a factor. I'm not real fond of hail or lightning, but thunder, ah, if used correctly, makes a great exclamation point. Come by a Dodge! And fog. Oh, I love fog. Once sold a complete set of encyclopedias to a bus right here in front of our Chase Dodge, but don't tell Art. We were moving right along, doing all kinds of great work, having all kinds of fun, and then Jimmy Carter became president, and the economy took a dumper, and so did we. So did our clients. They came to us and said, guys, we don't want to spend the money. We're going to the radio station and get it done for free. And I said, you could do that. But trust me, you're going to get what you paid for. And we may be the only production company in existence whose every client went into bankruptcy shortly after they dumped us. There's an honor we're quite proud of. Sometime after that, I moved away. We kept in touch by phone. One, one Sunday morning, 
I decided I'm going to call Don, say hi, see how things are. And uh, so I rung him up and I, I, I was waiting for him to pick up the phone. Well, Don and Jenny were uh, members of the Crystal Cathedral or they were just you know, visiting one of the two. I'm not sure. If you don't know what the Crystal Cathedral is, it's this huge church in Santa Ana or somewhere down there in Southern California. Huge church. And the pastor was going, let's pause for this moment of silence. And in that moment of silence, Don's phone rang. Well, it didn't really ring as much as it did this. I've got the texture if you've got the goat. No, no, that's coat. Oh, my, there's a goat herder outside of town who has a flock with a 15-year guarantee. You didn't. I did with my texture goat. That's texture coat from mm. factory authorized improvements is for houses. Not goats. No, oh, you can my. beautify your house with texture coating. It's 20 times thicker than paint. I noticed that when it went on. Just call 485-7733 for a free estimate. 485-7733? Don't let someone get your goat. I call won't. factory authorized improvements, 485-7733. Our friendship spanned 44 years, and in that time we became brothers. Brothers from another mother, but still brothers. And in that time I found that Don suffered from depression, really deep, dark depression. And when he told me this, I went, what? I've never seen you not be laughing or smiling in my entire time I've ever known you. How can you be suffering from depression? He goes, trust me, it's easy. And I went, okay. A couple of days later, Jenny called me, Jenny, his wife called me up and said, Bill, I want you to know that you are the only person that can bring Don out of his depression. You're the only one that can bring him up, get him laughing, get him smiling. And I thanked her and I went, wow, what, what a responsibility. But he was my best friend, my brother. So whenever I was near him or on the phone with him, I did my very best to make him laugh, to make him smile because that was my job. I am the crazy one. That's my job. Anyway, during those, that time of depression, I, I said to him, you, you are depressed. You, you were in Vietnam. I mean, I can't imagine how depressed you were over there. And he goes, no. And quite honestly, that's one of the very few times I wasn't depressed. I go, and they call me the crazy one? Come on. You're weird, dude. Well, anyway, I'm not sure if you knew he was a Vietnam veteran. You couldn't miss. He wore his hat all the time. Anyway, my friend, my brother, very rare and unique individual, he entertained and made people laugh with his radio show and his commercials and his drab, droll, humorous one-liners. He, uh, he was quite a guy. And he called me the crazy one. And he called me the crazy one because he instigated things. He said, oh, hey, Bill, how about this? And I go, uh, I like that. And so one day I'm down at his house ready to go to my 50th year reunion and come to find out that he and Jenny knew a girl that I went to high school with, and, and he said, you know what would be funny is if you called her and her husband over and said, you know, I get these feelings, this, these visions um, in my head. And so I said, well, okay. So later that night at the reunion, I called them aside, and I said, you know, Bonnie, I don't know what it is, but I keep getting this, this vision every time I see you. I keep getting this feeling every time I see you, something about a a multicolored house. And her husband dropped a load, pulled out his wallet, and said, this one? And I said, yes, that's it. I had him hook, line, and sinker. I had him going for about 10 minutes. And they were looking, are you psychic? And I said, well, I don't like to use the word psychic. I just, you know, I get feelings. I, I just, sometimes it comes to me, sometimes. And I, like I said, had him going for 10, 15 minutes. And then I said, you know, I think the only psychic thing between you and I is the fact that we both know Don and Jenny Sinclair. She was going to hit me, but her husband stopped. I had her, hook, line, and sinker. Don Sinclair was my very best good friend. I will miss him every single day of the whatever's left of my life. He made me smile and he made me laugh. 
and I will never find anyone to take his place. So rest in peace, my brother. Rest in peace. And remember, if you're looking for a parking place, that parking angel is just around the corner. So keep in mind that I love you. And remember, keep your feet on the wall. Keep reaching for the phone. And no matter where you go, there you are. Peace, love, aloha.